What is going on Adventure Nation? In this episode, we finish up our stay at Alieska by doing a little bit of hiking, and then we're gonna head down into the Kenai Peninsula. This is the Motorhome Experiment. The Alieska Resort is a ski resort just south of Anchorage. I think like any ski resort, it's just a sleepy area in the summertime. So yeah, they allow RVers just to park here for 10 bucks a night. And you can see that it is a big open parking space here. It is not exactly flat. You can see that we are kind of high up on this side kind of craziness and it is sloped all the way down into here now if you could stay further up in this area maybe but we want to stay out of the way so and but the views are like super pretty right now the mountains and the flowers are out uh, people except for us right it's like but people have seen bears all around <laughs> a wolf but we have not seen anything yeah the views are absolutely spectacular today we're gonna go see a waterfall do you have any idea what this waterfall is called uh bridal bridal falls or something like, like every other waterfall is called bridal veil falls <laughs> yeah i'm not sure if it's that uh, uh, virgin creek falls virgin creek falls all right let's do it our first stop today is going to be the virgin creek trail it's supposed to be a spectacular waterfall here virgin creek falls trail guessed it I crashed into the wall the wind from the waterfall in that tight little space was just a little too much I was wondering how I was gonna get it back but it looked okay so I just full throttle and it came off the wall I kind of looked at it a little bit and thought well wasn't me must have been the drone but because I'm a slow learner I thought you know let's keep flying the drone in this tight windy narrow space over an icy cold creek I mean, hey, what could possibly go wrong? Uh, that's probably dead. I don't Honey. think that'll be working anymore. Okay. So there might not be any more drone footage from Alaska, folks. Is it a good time to announce Patreon <laughs> to get a new drone? No. <laughs> Son of a gun. It's bound to happen when you play with this stuff, so what are you going to do? I guess we're heading back to the car and see if I can get this thing dried off. Hit it with a hair dryer, throw it in a bag of rice. You got a big bag of rice, Andy? Luckily I do have a big bag of rice. Oh, nice. So, yes. All right, let's go. Think, these things are gonna happen, so. Didn't realize I was gonna go for a dip today, but that water's freaking cold. Woo. I bet, like he just lunch in. <laughs> Stay with me, buddy. We'll get you out of here. We're gonna get you back to safety. We're gonna get you help. Too much? I think so. Okay, all right, we won't do that again. But I'm sure he's really feeling that. Like he has to get him some help. I do have to say, Lorena, that if you're staying over there at the Alieska Resort, 
Park. You should come down to the Virgin Creek Falls Trail. It's a very short hike, but it's so beautiful, like so beautiful. Yeah, pretty crazy. One thing I would usually recommend if you get an electronic component wet, especially like a cell phone, is immediately drop it into a bag of rice and or some kind of drying agent. They actually have specific stuff for that. So if you're prone to doing those sort of things, you can immediately get your phone into, a, into something that will help dry the electronics from the inside. That stuff sucks the moisture out of all the components that uh, would get wet. The only real moving components in this are the motors, the fan inside of here, and a few of the components in the gimbal. So when this thing's flying, just so you guys know, this gimbal is what helps make everything nice and smooth as I'm flying, except for that last piece where it was tumbling down the mountain. We're gonna take a blow dryer and we're gonna hit it with the blow dryer, try and do the best we can to get it dry. And then I'm actually just gonna fly it immediately and see if we can't get any of the water off of the components by just having those components themselves flinging the water off and heating up and getting the water out on their own accord. So let's get into it and we can go to it. The really good thing about the whole deal is the fact that it's pure spring water and not salt water. So I think that's gonna be my saving grace. By the way, y'all are looking good today. As are you. Decisions, decisions. It's anchored or it's sewered. Yeah. So, apologize, I didn't film anything coming out of there today, but uh, I have my mind on other things. My poor drone doesn't look like it's going to come back from its uh, crash into the water. So let's not say it's not. Just let's just wait and see. But I didn't film anything coming out of there, and it's absolutely beautiful. I should have shot stuff coming out of here. Here, look. I'll show you. I'll show you out the window here. This is this is what we missed pulling out. Look at that. Alaska Wildlife Conservation Center is $15 per person and they've got a whole bunch of different animals including some reindeer and bald eagles and bison and all kinds of stuff so we're gonna check it out and see what we can find. Well, first let's try to find parking. <laughs> well finding parking is always the the first line of the challenge the first it. challenge. We have seen a lot of elk before, but we have never seen those enormous rags that they have. These are all male, by the way. Bull males. These are such simple males. So many bulls. rack jokes going through my head right now. <laughs> Don't, Paul. Don't. Uh. This is a baby moose that just got brought in because his mom was hurt. 
killed. Hit by a fire. What's his name? Her name? They say so. Crazy. Huh? Oh, it's Arnold. It's a he, I think. They look like they're wearing really fancy shoes. Okay, Miss Lorena, the Alaska Wildlife Conservation Center, AWCC, I think it is, the Alaska Wildlife Conservation Center. What do you think? What are your thoughts? I think it's amazing. I really wanted to come here because this is not a zoo. It's a conservation center. They will bring animals that have been orphaned or uh, they have some sort of injury and they cannot live in the wild anymore. They will bring them here. Some of them have were were illegally taken by people, and the authorities yeah, got them back. And then by then, they're too domesticated yes. and can't do their self in the wild. So, and so that was a cool thing about this. It's just to see all those animals. Like you can see the wolves in front of you right now. And but it's kind of weird setup. Like everybody can be just walking around with the cars. So there's really not like a put and put, put place to park. Like you can park pretty much anywhere. So that was weird. You guys, uh, hold on a second. Can you guys see the wolves on top of the house there? Kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> and also, but if you're handicapped as well, you can just literally just try with your car close to the enclosures and see some of the wildlife. So that that is the one cool thing. Yeah, you can do this. like these people here. You can just drive oh, from spot to spot. The berries on the, on the tree. Yep. On top of the tree. Yeah, we're going to have a hard time talking to you guys on the way out because there's so much cool stuff still to see. <laughs> All right, I'm going to show you guys the caribou as we're driving out here. Well, see what I'm talking about? You can be driving around and still see the wildlife. So if you cannot really walk that much, this is a great way to do it. Absolutely if incredible. If it's a rainy day, they might be inside, kind of like in their shelters, so you might not see them. But we really like it. It was not that expensive. It was $15 per person, per adult. Kids, I'm not sure. And uh, I think, I mean, I think in my opinion, if you're around this area, I mean, you should come and support them because obviously all the proceeds go into helping the animals. So, and I think it was very cool. I think we have seen more wildlife here or animals here than we have seen since we got in Well, Alaska. of course, but that's not fair. They're in captivity. Well, yes, exactly. That's what but, I said, not, not wildlife. It's like we've right. seen more animals. But like Paul said earlier, jeez. Dang, this road is slick. All right, with that being said, I would also say it's number two if you're in the area. I don't think this is a day trip. Like you don't want to, if you're in Anchorage and you're not coming down here, don't come all the way down here, but. I will come all the way down here from Anchorage. So you're saying it's a day trip? For me, from Anchorage, yes. All right, for me, it's if you're in the area. You just happen to be driving by. And also, like Paul said, a lot of these animals, you can get so close to them that you can really see them from, like, every detail from very close. That in the wild, you will not see a moose, like, that close. Right, you're not going to see the fur on their horns and yes. it's just incredible how close you get to be to them. We are heading over to Whittier, which requires us to go through this two mile tunnel. I guess this used to be a train tunnel, so it's one way only. And this guy's gonna walk out in front of me and I'm gonna kill him. No, he didn't. So it is one way only, and we are going to wait, wait and then you get so that you. He gets ADD very quick. I'm just trying to find out what the guy was like staring at. I, in Kevin and Laura's coach, but this is a one-way train tunnel, so you have to wait. And sometimes I guess it's a 30-minute wait, but uh, it's saying here the next traffic release is at 4.30. It is 4.27, mm -hmm. so it should be 
pretty quick that we get out of here. And uh, we're obviously not gonna record the entire two mile trip, but uh, we will record some of it. There is a toll to go through this tunnel over to Whittier. We're hoping Whittier is worth it, we don't know. Uh, we haven't heard too much about it, but for the RV towing, and again, we're 34 feet towing a car, was $38 round trip. So let's hope that Whittier is exciting. I don't think I don't it is. I don't think so. For what we have heard from other people, it's just pretty much almost nothing to see. Just one building with a bunch of stuff. That's about it. <laughs> it's a ferry place. I guess you can take the ferry there. We're here for the experience of the tunnel. It's always about the experience, man. Okay, Laurie, you're gonna have to fire that up again. I don't know if you guys can see us or not, I don't think you can. but I know you can see out the front. And how cool is this? We're actually driving on the railroad tracks and it just, I don't even, my mind is blown right now. Like, it's crazy. This feels so weird, like we're driving inside of a cave, is what it feels like. It feels like we're doing something really wrong. Yeah, like we didn't supposed to be here. Yeah, like, Kevin, why did you turn down here? <laughs> this is awesome. That was I mean, worth the 38 bucks, just going you one way. You think that a tunnel is like, hey, it's just a tunnel, but no, I mean, this one is very cool. Just know that the railroad still goes through there. That's pretty awesome. Me. And there is the sign for Whittier, so. Welcome to Whittier. Here? So that's gonna be the view out of our front window. Not too shabby at all. We have landed here in Whittier, Alaska. As you can see, beautiful views all the way around. Some waterfalls. We're down here at the marina, trying to find out where we're supposed to pay for camping, which isn't anywhere near here. But we were told we should be able to use pay envelopes somewhere here. <laughs> That's literally a vending machine for bait fish, frozen bait. Need some bait? Just come to the vending machine. Or if you need a late night snack. Like the restaurants are closed, that thing's open 24 hours. You just come in and pay your money, get your fish fresh, cook that stuff up, good to go. When you come out of the tunnel, you can make a left and go over to the campground, which is way over on the other side of the bay. Then you can come over here and you can go to the Harbor Master building, which is the uh, gray building down here with a blue roof. <laughs> or you can just come right here to the boat launch. There's a little machine on the other side. You go through the whole process, you hit number nine, which gives you the RV and camping rate of $20 a day. Good to go. Yep, make sure you remember your license plate number. Remember your license plate number, use somebody else's credit card, and it's even cheaper. Get yourself some frozen bait. Don't use somebody else's credit card. But get you, some frozen bait. You can get some frozen bait right there. That would be, so that would be awesome. drove up this random street towards the 
waterfalls. You can hear it rushing all over us. And holy smokes. Check that out. How cool is that? That is definitely a building that says, please come inside. The Buckner Building is an abandoned former U.S. military building that was constructed in 1953. It was used as a mess hall, sleeping quarters, recreation, medical, and administrative facility, and it used to be one of the largest buildings in Alaska. They used to refer to it as a city under one roof. The building was damaged a little bit in the 9.2 Richter earthquake that happened in 1964. There wasn't any real structural damage because it was reinforced concrete construction and they continued to operate the building until 1966 when the Port of Whittier transferred it over to General Services Administration and they closed it down. Uh, again, there's a little weird thing that we can't get over is that we've had many people tell us that Whittier, there's nothing to see here. And you know, I, I kind of agree. There's a lot of nothing to see here. Like, look at, there's a whole bunch of nothing over there. There's me. And there's this giant glacier of nothing over there. <laughs> and then there's waterfalls like coming out of every single crack and crevice all over the place. There's a giant waterfall over there with a huge glacier that we can't see. So. Yeah, you should totally avoid Whittier at all costs and not come here because there's just nothing to see. By the way, we're not gonna let anybody know who told us that there wasn't much to see in Whittier, Tom and Faye, but uh, there is quite a bit to see here in Whittier, like that glacier, kinda cool. The campground we stayed at was across the bay from the city of Whittier, which was really pretty cool. It gave you great views of the city and a really cool view when the cruise ship came in the next morning, which we didn't get to see, so we'll talk about that in a later video. We also got to watch the trains as they came and went, and I think if you were staying at one of the campgrounds in the city of Whittier, those trains might have become a little bit annoying, but we were just far enough away that it wasn't too bad and we just got to watch them from a distance. But this is where we're gonna end this one. So if this is your first time here, it'd be awesome if you got to know us a little bit, hung out, and that means you have to hit that subscribe button. You'll also wanna click the little no notifications bell so that if any new videos get posted, you'll get a notification as soon as that happens. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again in the next one. Oh, by the way, don't worry, we won't let anybody know who told us not that there wasn't much to... <laughs>